Well, good day and welcome back. I hope everybody had a, a great Christmas and um, and all the best to everybody for the new year. Now, I was going to have a video out last week, but I've been a bit crook. I got done by a um, what they think was a white tip spider right on the tip of the elbow, and um, it sort of dropped me for a while. Yeah, knocked knocked the shit clean out of me. Sort of come out and do a little bit feel like crap go back inside and lay down and yeah so I've been going back and forth to the doctors and trying to get that wound to heal which having a bit of trouble but I've got to get on and build this crane for the old man's trailer I'll put a clip up here the, the little dog trailer he's got and the whole idea of this crane it's for one purpose really it's just we've got a 60 inch Cub Cadet lawnmower uh, zero turn and um been so wide it won't fit into any of the trailers, other trailers we've got but it will fit on this dog trailer really well so and I'm and I won't have the old man driving up ramps to put a zero turn on this you end up are so red and yeah won't be good so I've offered to build him a crane now I've got a power pack and a ram out of a tailgate loader out of a timing I think it's how you pronounce it timing tailgate loader so it'll have a power pack yeah, hydraulic lift plus it'll have an ATV winch on it at this stage so the last <coughs> week or so I've been out here just poking along just doing a little bits and pieces of the, just the, the plane turning stuff now I was like fortunate enough to pick up a right angle gearbox that I can use it's, I think it's around a 40 to 1, I think, around there somewhere, that I can use for the um, for the slew on it, rotation of the crane. This is the parts I've made so far. That's the bottom bush, made out of plastic, can be replaced. So it slips in there. This bush here goes in there and it's got a lip on it, so... It can be actually removed and replaced if at some stage it needs replacing. I've made them so this plastic one being the bottom, it will slip through the top one. So it can be replaced when it's sitting in this tube. So not really a real good job of explaining it. So that's the bottom one. The top one will go in there. That gets pushed into that. Once it's welded, this is going to be welded in here. This blocks can be welded in the, into the actual tube. And this bush can be pushed in and out. And then this will here will be welded to a plate. Under that plate will be this gearbox, like so. So you can imagine that this plate here being on top. Shafts coming up into this shaft here, so that's going to sit down in there, and then I've still got to work out how I'm going to do it. But that's this shaft here is the one that come out of this little gearbox, come out of here. So I've got to mount that in the end of this shaft somehow. So I've got no plans for this, just building it off the cuff, wing it. If it works, it works. If it doesn't, re <clears throat> remake it. Now I've been out and seen the engineering company here and got their advice on material sizes and so on. So I don't believe I'm going to have any dramas with this failing with weight on it. Now the mower weighs... You look up the spec sheet, it says 1200 pound, which is about 660 odd kilo or something. If this, if this will lift 700 safely, 700 kilo safely, that's all I'm chasing. The way I've explained it to the engineering mob, they reckon it'll lift it no dramas at all. And when you have a look at them cheap ass engine cranes you buy, even the ute, them cheap ute cranes you can buy out of super cheap or online. They made enough of them. They're paper thin. So 
I don't want to over spec this and have it miles too heavy, but I don't want to have it as light as buggery and then have a chance of it failing. Okay. I'm going to get under it and start making a few more bits and um, see how we go. So no plans for this, just wing it, see what happens. Okay, what I've done here, I've put these bushes in, pressed them in with the press. They're square to each other. So I've left them out. This one's out about five mil, this one here's a bit further. But these are going to get welded around here. Probably not going to show that while the young fellas home will get him to weld it up. Well, it's still red hot. But I got that welded. It's not the prettiest, but the bottom here, it's going to get re-welded again when it goes onto the base plate. It's certainly not going to fall off. I just hope everything aligns up when I get the bushes in it. But I can't put the bushes in yet until it's welded to the base plate, otherwise that plastic one will just melt. Anyway, I end up welding it up myself, the young fella. I want to pick up his brother. Okay, I have to make up another block. This one's got to have a two inch bore in it. It's inch and three quarter at the moment. Sorry, it's got to have a 50 mil bore. This bore in here, it's inch and three quarters. Um, I've got to square it up to fit inside that three inch box section, which is 69 mil internal. If you followed me on for a while, you know I've been using these Pelpit WNMG inserts. Now, just for curiosity, I want to see how they go squaring up something like this um, with the interrupted cut. We're running no coolant, just just driving them. So I've already done one side, which I didn't show because it was a little bit precarious. There's only sort of holding on with two jaws. <laughs> Well, that insert actually held up extremely well, and I wasn't shy on the feed rate that one either. So that's down to 65, uh, 69 mil across the two flats. I'll spin it around and just do these other two sides. Point eight four to come off. Okay, overall, I didn't use any cut and fluid at all, as you've seen on any of this. Interrupted cuts, taken a well, the first few cuts on each side were about a mil and a half deep. Um, and this, I have not turned the insert or nothing at the inserts, the same one as I started with. And it's actually held up really, really good. So that was a good test. This is going to get jammed in inside the tube. So surface finishing, first surface finishing isn't really a drama. Like overall, it's not bad considering. So definitely worth spending the bit extra coin buying decent inserts, I think. I've got to take this out now and then set it up in the four jaw so I can bore this the centre out to 50 mil to accept the um the main rod. So take a bit of time in setting it up, make sure it's pretty darn true.
Okay, I indicated this in off these flats. Now I know I didn't get um, when I put the flats on it wasn't true with the ball. I couldn't get right off the ball. The ball was actually oval. Um, but I trued it up or indicated in off to all the four flats. And I know when I put them on, I did go a bit heavier on like one side on each, you know, on two sides. Then brought it down to size on the other two sides. So that's why it looks, these aren't concentric. These corners aren't concentric with the edge. That's why it looks like it's wobbling out off the piss. But, you know, I just thought I'd explain that. So we're at 46.36. Bit more to go yet. Shoot for 50. 49.99. That shaft won't fit. <laughs> I might have to polish the shaft down a touch. I'm not going to try and take a light cut in that. That'll just destroy it. There we go. I actually shortened, just shortened this shaft to the rough length it needs to be. And just going to reduce it down. I want it to protrude out the end so I can put a good run of weld around it. I'll take some measurements and use the TNGG insert which is real low tool pressure. Should be able to nicely remove a couple of thou off that to make this fit nice. That's where it's going to sit on to about there and then it'll be welded solid around that. And then this will be pushed into the... Um, you know, the tube. Right now, let's see if I can explain this properly. This gearbox is going under this plate. This shaft goes in there. This is going to feed up um, and be fixed into the end of this shaft. So that'll give you a rotation. So if you ever want to take this out, it's just a matter of lifting it out because this is fixed into here and the key will be driven by the keyway which I'm going to have to modify a little bit, shorten it and so on so that's the deal there so I've got to bore a hole up the end of this shaft to take this rod this steady rest I don't know what it's like on the other AL960s but this is only good for about a 60mm diameter it was only good for about 50 the way these were set up. I did shorten them so I can get about 60 mil in it now, but I'd like something that could take 100. So, so it's going to be a future build is to build a whole new steady rest. Okay, I can send a drill that and bore it out. 20 mil. We've just done some rough numbers. This wants to be about 40 mil deep. This here is going to get drilled and set screwed in this shaft so I'll drill it and then I'll put a good decent dimple into the um, shaft and that'll be fixed into there with Loctite. Okay, 
shaft from cross drilling a couple of holes to hold that shaft in this shaft's finished Okay, now I've tightened that down on the shaft. I can see where the, the set, set screws want to sit and I can put a dimple in there. And then final assembly, these set screws can be locked, locked tied it in. And I'll probably, I've got enough room to stick another set screw above that, just to ensure that it doesn't come undone. So these are the plates you just see me machine a top off. The idea of the box is I need somewhere to put this gearbox. So it'll have a, a plate welded in the inside. And the shaft will come down from this, down through here, into the gearbox. I need something to pack that up. Uh, it'll have a hole at the side that the handle can go in to be able to wind this worm drive which will rotate the crane it's a bit of plate here I've still got to take some more off this but that'll fill in the back here and just have some um, countersunk bolts to hold that in yeah, so I've still got to um, still got to cut these down more. But you come up a bit better way to do it on the mill. Anyway, that's where that's that's the design. So, like I said at the start, this is all out of my head. Just making it up as I go. Getting the alignment of this is going to be a bit tricky. And the idea of having the, the ends removable is so you can actually get in here, take it all apart if you want to and be able to actually bolt it down so that that's the idea around that